Hello. 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 It's been a while. Um, about what? Seven months? No. Four Start months? Again. Start again. Start again. Three months. We've just been through mm. a lot. Seven months. <laughs> Hello. It's been a while. It's been four months. Four months. Four months. Three months it was. Oh, three months. Just said. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> Isn't it? It's there. I'm just going to film with one Right, three yeah, okay. months. Hello. Hello. It's been a while. It's been three months. Three months. Three months. Three months, yeah. Three months ago we was in Thailand. That's when we give our last update. That's where we spent uh, our lockdown. We were in Thailand for seven months. Four, uh, four months locked down on PP Island. Yep. Yeah. But we cycled now for two and a half years and Thailand was our 27th country. Yeah, and unfortunately, we were like, like we say, we was there for seven months. Um, the whole of Asia is still locked down. Well, countries are closed, borders. Um, so yeah, basically our visa ran out. So we had to get on an aeroplane and fly all the way back to where we are now, Italy. Fortunately, we had to get on a plane, which was devastating. So we're currently in a place called Ciprano, which is one hour south of Rome. Um, yeah, so obviously two reasons we came back, like we say, is because we had to leave Thailand, but also because we came back to collect our new travelling companion, Comet. And Comet is... He's snoozing. Yeah, he's just Oh, he here. was snoozing. <laughs> so, yeah, this is... So this we is chose Comet. Italy to come and get Comet. He is 12 weeks old this week. <laughs> and we're just waiting for him to have his third and final vaccination and then we can continue on the road. But he loves the tent. He loves the tent, snoozing in the tent. So Comet is a Jack Russell Terrier. He's a rough coat, as you can see. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's in for a big adventure. <laughs> so we're going to start sharing um, a series of short stories, uh, like stories from the road, if you could call it that. Uh, and what better place than to start um, here in Italy? Because this is where we're going to restart our, our world tour again because we've not exactly been doing much over the past few months when we were in, in Thailand, so... Yeah, we haven't abandoned our, abandoned our tour, but due to COVID and borders being closed, uh, we have to just go, forget our route and just go where we can. So we're starting again in Italy. Hopefully we can make our way this time to Mongolia, which we didn't get time for the first time round. So hopefully that's where we can plan and head to. Yeah, so, it's so very, we're sort of going back the same yeah. way from Italy. So our tour continues, but we've had to reroute and reschedule things. So as soon as Comet's had his, once he's had his third vaccination in approximately four weeks, uh, then he has his rabies injection, which means he then gets his, his passport. pet passport. So we can Yay. then... Next stop is uh, back into Croatia, if the borders are still open. <laughs> this is the trouble, we don't know exactly how long we're going to be in each country, because it's all COVID pending, isn't it? So we'll just move to each country, and whatever happens at the border when we get there, we just have to take it as it is, whatever yeah. happens. If we can't go in, we don't go in. <laughs> just try and see some different parts of each country. So we are going to change the route, but yeah. and. And we're going to visit people that we met the first time round, aren't we? Yeah. We're going to go and visit our friends in, in Albania. Country, yeah. yeah. Go and visit the sisters in the convent in Albania yeah. and yeah, and many more. So four years ago, because I knew I was at high risk of breast cancer because uh, family history of it, I went to a family history clinic to talk about prevention, maybe having a double mastectomy and anything else that they could recommend for prevention. So they sent me for my first mammogram. Little did I know that I already had breast cancer. So that's when the long journey started. I had a double mastectomy, um, chemotherapy, a lymph node removal surgery, and a year of Herceptin injections. 
So this is why we are on this journey today, Cycling for Prevent Breast Cancer, because we like to raise awareness about prevention. But when you first went to talk about prevention, like the, what do they call it, the Angelina Jolie, Jolie effect, effect. <laughs> um, it's all right going to talk about prevention, but are you actually going to you know, see it through? Are you going to go and have whatever they recommend, double mastectomy? And I don't know, what, if you'd have only been going for the talk, which you did, and if, if, if everything had been okay at the mammogram, that was the big question, would would Gabs Yeah, and I don't know whether I would have gone through with it, yeah, I don't know. So it's, that's, it's not easy to just make that decision, is it? So just, just before Gabs had to have a double mastectomy, we thought it was a good idea to um, make like a plaster cast of her of her breasts and that's what we did didn't we we got some uh, as you can see from <laughs> from the photos we got some just this little plaster cast kit where you made some molds of your it was very cold yeah. <laughs> what i remember <laughs> it was also a good way of making light of the whole situation because yeah. it was a it's serious time. mental therapy <laughs> yeah so it just gave us a bit of a laugh before you went into Cheered hospital us up. Yeah. and yeah so basically they are now on display in a in a little display cabinet just to, so Gabs can remind herself of what her breasts look like. <laughs> <laughs> so, important message, yeah, it's very important to check your breasts. Men as well, because, what is it, one in every thousand men get breast cancer. And, uh, yeah, so again, if Gabs hadn't have been just to, to, to talk about prevention because of a family history, then possibly it would have been left, and, and just like the consultant did say, it would, if you'd have left it, you know, 12 months, it would have been a totally different story. Oh, yeah. So we're now in November, another important date for us, because um, three years ago, once Gabs had uh, finished a long drawn out chemotherapy, we decided to get in our camper van and drive all the way to Spain. Um, reason being is it was obviously to go for the better weather, but more importantly, it was to start the training for our world cycling tour which was soon to follow um what six months later seven yeah. months later so yeah so we lived from our camper van in spain just traveled all over didn't we yeah. and uh yeah so so it's just over three years now since we left our little house in in thistleton in lancashire it's six thirty sunday morning time to wake gabs up for a morning run <laughs> like a nice early Sunday morning run. Come on Gabs, hurry up. Come on Gabs, quicker. Come on Gabs, hurry up. Come on Gabs, hurry up. Hey, okay, we're currently training in Spain. Here comes the rain. So all's going well with the training. We're doing lots of swimming, cycling, running. We're even managing to stick to uh, what you could call a healthy diet. Um, what are you doing? If you would like to come and wave us off as we set off on our world cycling tour, it's on the 9th of July at the Nightingale Centre in Manchester. The weather that day in Manchester will be sunshine with clear blue skies with a temperature of... Yeah, what are you doing? Stop messing around. So whilst in Spain, uh, Gab's treatment still wasn't over. Like I said, she'd finished her chemotherapy, but she was still, um, she still had another six, seven months worth of um, other treatments. She had to fly back every, every three weeks from, um, from Malaga Airport to Manchester Not Airport, second. where she used to go and visit the, the Christie Hospital where you received your treatment that afternoon and she was back on the plane and back in Malaga by the evening. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that, yeah, for... It was about six months, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So we chose to come to Italy because uh, it's where we want to start again from. Uh, also because this is where Comet was born and we've come to collect him. And I wanted to go back to the UK and see my mum, who I haven't seen for two years. 
So I thought it's easy to do that from Italy and for Chris to go back and see his son Jacob. But unfortunately, due to all the lockdowns, we can't do that at the moment. So yeah, in a few weeks when Comet has got his passport, we will be on the road again. Yeah. So we're heading to Mongolia and uh, like I wanted to do the first time round, we are going to live with the Eagle Hunters and then hopefully trek across the Gobi Desert. Eagle Hunters being in the north of Mongolia, so this time um, we're going to go into Russia and come into Mongolia from the north and head south to the to the start of the Gobi Desert. From there, it's looking like back into China, into Pakistan. This is all obviously when COVID allows us to do it. But yeah, into and Pakistan because my number one place was always going to be India and Nepal. So it's slowly, slowly making our way to basically where we've more or less just come from. We were so close to I India. I was going to say that when we were in Thailand, oh. so close. It one, was so upsetting. Literally, a flight yeah. would have been less than one hour away from India. And even cycling, it's just was close. A few days cycling. A few con straight couple across of countries. Myanmar into India. Because we was going to go into Bangladesh first, but again, it just all, everything just changed, turned on us. So. Yeah, that was heartbreaking. Having to get on a plane and fly all the way back that you've just cycled over two, yeah. two and a half years. And then <laughs> India just round the corner and then you've gone, have to go all the way back. But the flight as well, the flight back took us, because you know you can see <laughs> you know, your route back um, from Thailand, oh. and it was we literally fl so we flew over uh, Nepal, over Mount Everest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we flew over India. It's so, like yeah, so close, but we'll get there. So close, but yet so far, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there one day. So our cycling the world is for our charity Prevent Breast Cancer. They are wearing off these t-shirts. <laughs> They're now. a it's bit a, old now. We actually got these ones in Italy, in Italy two years yeah. ago. <laughs> so we need to replace them. So we just like to make it important. <laughs> make it important. We just like to make everybody aware how important it is to be breast aware. And you can donate to prevent breast cancer by going on our uh, website, chrisandgabsworldcyclingtour.com and you can support our charity. So till the next time, ciao from Ciprano in Italy. Ciao. And also, we'll finish with a little video of when Gabriella was ringing the bell when she finished a chemotherapy just over three years ago. <laughs> Enjoy. Hi, I'm Gabriella Gratrex and in February this year, 2017, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. In March, I had a double mastectomy and on the 1st of May, I started my first chemo here at the Christie and today is August the 14th and I've had my sixth and final chemo and I'm ready to ring the bell. But first, I just want to thank a few people, starting at the beginning. I want to thank, first of all, St Mary's Genetic Family History Clinic for all their brilliant work there. Then I was referred to the Nightingale Centre, the Wilm Low. Wilmslow Hospital under the care of uh, James Harvey. Great team, great people. Thanks for all their hard work, all the research. Thanks to Genesis, thanks to Prevent Breast Cancer, all the fundraising they do. Everyone's been brilliant. And to the Christie's, the Chemo Centre, the Blood People, all the staff are absolutely fantastic can't thank everybody enough and all the research team. Without them, I wouldn't be stood here today. I was out crying. But last but not least, to my gorgeous fiance, Chris O'Hare. Without me, I have got through it all. He's been solid and strong and stood by me. And it's been hard for him just as much as it is for me. And I've got to ring the bell for him and for me. Oh, yeah, first of all, I need to put my finger on. <laughs> 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 I'm going to do 18 rings for every king of my
crystal hair. Ooh, life's gonna get good. Oh, life's gonna get good. Oh, life's gonna get good. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Okay. <laughs>